We're short. No, no, no. We're short. By how much? Well, that's the kicker. We're short by one student. One student? One stupid, stupid student. Are you kidding me? The dean really thinks one student is going to make a difference. Oh, okay. You know how anal he is about his budgets. He thinks if we enroll one more student, that all of our financial problems will just be solved. But we don't have any more interviews scheduled. When does he want our recommendations by? Today. Today? Or we're fired. Or we're fired? What sense does that make? Well, I still think he blames us for accepting the pyromaniac that burned down the science center. <laughs> but he had an amazing essay. <laughs> what we didn't know. Well, what are we going to do? We finished our interviews last week. Check the wait list. If any of them come in today, give them a call. The wait list? Oh, God. Hey, our backs are against the wall right now. If we can't find a diamond in the rough, we're out. All right. I'll start making calls. Good luck. Hey, keep your head up. The waitlisted kids aren't as bad as you think. Carol, thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. Did you have any trouble finding our offices? Um, that's a personal matter, and I'd rather not talk about it right now. <laughs> okay. Shall we get started? Sometimes. Um, well, let me start by telling you about how this university differs from others in the state. We're a smaller school with smaller class sizes and personal attention, but we have the resources of a big state school. These resources include amazing internships and a faculty of practicing professionals. I am so glad to hear that, because whenever I applied in-state, one of my biggest fears is being overwhelmed by huge lecture classes. Well, that's exactly the atmosphere we try to avoid here. Now, have you thought about a major yet? That's my mother you're talking about! <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. You didn't just ask to see my mother in a two-piece bathing suit, did you? <laughs> no, I didn't. I'm, I'm sorry. Allow me to explain. I have an extremely rare condition known as crux nixophilius. It's a neurological condition that renders me incapable of hearing the question. Correctly. And by correctly, you mean? Every time you ask a question, I'll hear a completely different one. I see. How come I've never heard of this Cuesta uh, before? Eleanor Roosevelt, probably. <laughs> I, I probably should have told you when I first came in, but I don't like to make a big deal out of it. Well, Harold, I'm not sure what I can do exactly. A college interview is primarily the asking of questions. <laughs> So if a deaf kid came into your office, you'd just refuse to interview them? No, I'd make sure a translator fluent in sign language was available to aid. Well, I'm sorry that the AMA doesn't recognize QVC as a legitimate medical condition. But I try to live my life in a normal and healthy way, and I would appreciate it if you treated me the same as every other prospective student. Well, I suppose you're right, but, well, shall we continue in the interview? It's in Argentina, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it sure is. Uh, so, what kind of extracurriculars are you interested in? Melissa Blosh, seventh grade. We both had braces. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of weird. What's your favorite subject in school? Uh, I would take the South Park Road, except during rush hour. What's your favorite color? Every Sunday. <laughs> well, that went well. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. Do you need directions to get back on the I-40? Um, Cookie Monster. <laughs> it's because I love googly eyes. Wait, is that weird? A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, thank you for coming in on such short notice. I'm glad you could fit me in. My life has just been so busy lately. Oh yeah, with, with what? Oh, you know, applying to schools, end of the year club wrap ups, trying to get into prestigious summer programs. And on top of all that, I'm being filmed for a documentary. Oh, a documentary, really? Yeah, I know it's weird. My brother knows this guy who's doing this thing about high schoolers, like a pretty realistic piece about kids all over the country. They just thought I was interesting, I guess. 
so they just follow you around everywhere? Yeah, and I probably should have told you this on the phone, but they're right outside the door. Oh, well... And I know it's weird and everything, but they're completely respectful, very quiet. You'll hardly even know that they're here. Well, I bet they are. It's just I have a reputation at the school. Oh, they'll blur your face. No one will even know it's you if you want. So you promise they'll blur my face and disguise my voice? Oh, yeah. If you just sign this and check this box, we'll make sure your likeness isn't used in any way. It's not that I don't trust him. It's just people nowadays and... He signed it! Great, great, great. Hey, how are you? All right. Girls! All right. Remember, Kim, we're making the college rounds now. We want you to be dumb, loud, mean, obnoxious. Okay? We're trying to be the next Jessica Simpson. The next fat guy and the biggest loser. The next Kim Kardashian. Okay, so let's up the off factor. I want to hate you so much that I can't look away. Understand? Lights, camera, action! I thought this was a documentary. <sighs> Come on, man. Can't you just do your job? Ask a couple questions. We want this to be quick. Let's be quick. <coughs> but she said this was a documentary. <clears throat> yes. It's a series of documentary short films premiering on the T4 network on Sundays. T4? The teen reality music channel with all those spoiled birthdays and karaoke drama queens? Oh, good. You're a fan. All right. Just ask some questions and we'll be out of your hair. No. I won't be on that program. Should have looked at the contract, my friend. If you don't do it, you'll be fined twenty thousand dollars. Twenty thousand? Come on, just do your job, ask a couple questions, and we'll be out of here. Gotcha? Fine. I'll All right. Fine. And Kim, remember what I said. Action. Okay, Kim. It's um, pronounced Kim Bar L. No, he's, he's silent. Okay, Kim Bar L. Uh, what is it that you'd like to do at this university? Oh, first of all, party. <laughs> Second of all, meet some Toads Hawk guys. Like, Toads and Toads. <laughs> toads, you say? <laughs> Sweet. Um, so, what kind of majors, major are you interested in? What do you mean, major? A major? A, a degree? What do you mean, degree? Like, how hot it is outside? <laughs> <laughs> what? No. Kim, you don't know what a degree is? No, I'm totally dumb. But at least I'm not old like you. Kai. <laughs> Perfect, Kim. You are dumb, obnoxious, totally terrible person. Just the type of thing we like seeing on reality television. Oh, and when we do my confessionals, I should say how creepy the interviewer was and that he was, like, hitting on me. Yeah, I got some good shots of him looking lecturous and stuff. Thanks for your time, man. <laughs> and we'll totally blur your face. <laughs> Hi. Is, is the dean in? No. Could you leave him a message and ask him if how he'd feel if the doc if the college was in a documentary? Thank you. Yeah, I got it. No, 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 I got it. Trust me. I'm gonna push my five o'clock to six, my uh, Tuesday to Friday. Push a thing with another thing I got next month. So like, don't even worry about it. Excuse me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you hold on a second? Hey, what's up, dude? I'm gonna be done in a second. I'm great for your patience. I can't express that enough. We're gonna have a great combo here. I can feel it. All right, Keith. Hey, dude, I gotta wrap this up. I'm psyched. I'm pumped. I'm hungry. But blow people's minds. Blow it out of the water. Minyana. What's up, dude? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, oh. mm. ah, it's my bro here, Marty. He's such a jerk. I just gotta put your money where your mouth is, Marty Mar. No doubt. <laughs> You're Brett. You're 30 minutes late. I know, I know. I got caught up in this conference call, a nightmare lunch meeting, this girl I'm dating. You know. Well, it's really inconvenient for me. I mean, I have another prospective student. And I know, I know. I got a beard combing and like a fiber, so let's just bulldoze through this thing, shall we? <laughs> Fine. Okay, so... You know what? I'm sorry, I'll skip the whole, like, you ask questions parts. So, like, here's me, I'm a self-motivator, I'm the life of the party. I like your school's as aggressive economic program, it ties to Harvard Business School, and your Greek social scene. I'm gonna pledge Alpha Pi Beta or Delta Chi Delta, depending on the pledge class. My stats are well above your average, so let's do this thing, shall we? If you're in the boat, I'm driving the ship, you know what I mean? No, no, no. <laughs> Cranberries, baby! Man, what up, Buttercup? You kidding me? I nailed it. It's the breadster you're talking about. <laughs> Thanks again for coming in on such short notice. Please, it was no trouble at all. So tell me about yourself. What subjects do you like in school? Do you have any hobbies? 
hobbies. Yeah, I have a few, I suppose. I used to be really into swimming, but I haven't, not since that day. <laughs> Are you okay? We, we don't have to talk about no, it. No, it, it's fine. I, I want to. I, I need to talk about it. It was a blistering summer day, and Stephen Cropper, Pittsburgh's local weatherman, said it was one of the hottest days in recorded history, and advised us to stay in at all costs, but I ignored his warnings. Swimming was my life, and life doesn't stop, not even for a handsome weatherman with wispy blonde hair. <laughs> I got to the pool early, put on my swimming suit, and began my morning stretches. It was there that I saw him, a little boy, fiery red hair, freckles sprinkled across his pale white skin, teetering on the edge of the pool. Before I could even think to warn him, he tumbled into the watery abyss. His body thrashed about violently, his eyes closed shut from the sting of chlorine, his voice silenced from all the water he was swallowing. I swam over as quickly as I could, but it was too late. He was... That was eight years ago. I've never set foot in a swimming pool since. Lily, that was so brave of you to share that with me. Witnessing a death like that, especially that of such a young child. No, he didn't die. He didn't? No, the lifeguard pulled him out of the water. Oh, well, even seeing a near-death experience... He was only in the water for a few seconds before the lifeguard pulled him out. He was? Yes. I thought you said it was too late. It was too late for me! I couldn't save him because I was too late! <laughs> so, you, you saw a child fall into a pool, and he was pulled up by a lifeguard, and, you know what, let's, let's just move on. What is it about this school that interests you? Oh, well, there are a lot of reasons, I suppose, but <laughs> only one that ever really mattered. It was a crisp March day, much like today, and Amanda Barker, my best friend since the third grade, and I were leaving Mr. Short's excessively boring geometry class, and Amanda thought if I asked if I uh, thought about applying to college, and I said, yeah, uh, maybe, and she told me about this university and how her sister's going here, and asked if I'd like be interested, and I said, maybe, yeah. I was flippant, disregarding my best friend's advice with two little, inarticulate words, and those words were the last I ever said to Amanda. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Losing a best friend like that, I can't imagine how hard that must have been for you. It was. It really was. How old was Amanda when she passed? Passed? Died. She didn't die! <laughs> what? No, she's going to Yale in the fall. She's very smart. I thought you said that was the last time you ever spoke to her. Oh, it was. We had a falling out after that. A falling out? What? Like a... Big fight? No, we just went our separate ways. It was mutual. So, just to set the record straight, you saw a kid fall into a pool who was almost immediately pulled out by a lifeguard, and you lost touch with a friend. And these are the events that have shaped your life and caused you so much <laughs> emotional distress. You weren't there. You don't know what it was like to be there and see it. Well, it was great meeting you. I have a meeting in a few minutes, yeah, so... Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> and I know it's not really my place, but you might want to consider some kind of therapy. Therapy. Yes, I went to a therapist once. <laughs> it was a chilly autumn day, and I've been feeling optimistic. <laughs> Girl, 
in a pink dress, saying, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> right, anyway, let's take a look at your transcript. You have no GPA? That's right. And you didn't take the SATs? Well now, how about that? <laughs> According to this, you have a perfect attendance record, but have refused to do any homework or take any tests. That's right. <clears throat> Kelly, I'm not sure how you even got to this point. You can't go to college without a GPA. Perhaps you'd like to see my recommendation. No, there's no way. <laughs> this is a picture of a cat saying meow. Meow! Yes. <laughs> well, thanks for coming in. We'll be in touch. All right, then you take care. Okay. Oh, boy. Please leave. Let's freak me out. <laughs> uh, hi, bag of lettuce and pound fresh mozzarella. What? Oh, sorry. I meant that for someone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll call you back in a minute. Yeah, I got an interview right now. Okay, yeah. Bye. I'm sorry, but if you're not even going to talk... Oh, no, no, no. Let's talk, let's talk. I'm a great multitasker. I don't think you are. No, no, no. Right now, I'm texting my boyfriend in Hong Kong, ordering groceries online for my mom, and organizing my fantasy football league. So I think I am. Oh, and half a pound of potatoes. Did you just tell me your grocery list? No, I didn't. Yes, yes oh, you did. Oh, hold on. This is Ming, my Hong Kong boyfriend. It'll only be a second. Oh, Ming! Ting tong kung kwang kwang. Oh, ching chong kwang 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 kwang. No, this isn't going to work. Hong Kong twin twin twang. She told me you out! Put the phone away. Put the iPad away. And talk to me. Just me. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'll call you back. <laughs> no control freak. You can walk on. Okay. Got my undivided attention. Phone two. I'm not on the phone. You were texting. Yeah, but that doesn't count. Texting is an extension of who I am. <laughs> Ashley, put it away. This isn't going to go too well. Last year my phone died. Didn't have a phone for two days and I did terrible things to our cats. <laughs> put it away. So, what are you interested in this university? Well, for starters, I'm fascinated in 30% off sale this weekend. Oh, sorry. What I meant to say is that I am an active, motivated member of the community. And in Afghanistan, I'll click here and you'll see why Ashley cheated on Mark and oh my god, I can't believe it. <gasps> Ashley, <laughs> what was that? You know how I said I can do a lot of things at once? Well, once you take off 30 pounds, you can get a man like Sammy Hoffman bronking. Oh, I don't think you're going to do too well at this Renaissance Fair. Oh, but if the weather holds up, we might be able to go skiing. You're starting to freak me out. Oh, freakonomics blew my mind. Over matter of fact, Anthony is so much cuter than my avocados. Bee stings kill more people than shark meat. This week on Discovery of how Desperate Housewives. Oh. Pull out your phone and text. Pull it out and text, please. Thank you. <laughs> Well, your grades, recommendations all look pretty good. Thank you. Is there anything else you can tell me about yourself that's, you know, not on the page? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, let's see. I never played sports in school, but I played in a number of rec leagues. Volleyball, soccer, basketball, you name it. Uh, I volunteer at a soup kitchen every month. I'm a practicing vampire. And I teach sailing during the summer to sleepaway camp. Is that what you were looking for? Yeah, d definitely. It's just that... Can you elaborate a little bit more? Soup Kitchen? Well, I actually started because of my parents. They're very big into community service. No, it just sounded like you said you were a practicing vampire? <laughs> yeah, pretty much my whole life. So, you think you're a vampire? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. That would be... no. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry, it's just... I'm a practicing vampire. It's completely different. So, is this some kind of role-playing game or a club? Oh, no. It's bit more serious than that. Basically, I live my life in preparation for the day when I will, hopefully, turn into a vampire. <laughs> turn into? Right, so I sleep in a coffin, avoid garlic, eat lots of bloody meat, chew with my fangs, all in hopes that one day, 
If I'm diligent enough, I will turn into a vampire. So, shouldn't you be here right now because of the daylight in your skin? <laughs> That's a common stereotype. Vampires, just like humans, can walk freely during the day without receiving, receiving even the slightest irritation in the skin. Okay, so you're more like those Twilight kids. <laughs> <laughs> Is that an attempt at humor? <laughs> no, it's not a... Because I don't find it funny at all. In fact, I find it pretty insulting and frankly, pretty vampirist. Vampire? <laughs> Elizabeth! You're not going to turn into a vampire. Excuse me? That may be just the most expensive thing I've ever heard. Well, I think I'm going to leave now. Is this some kind of joke? Did Brittany put you up to this? No, this is very serious. In fact, when I get a hold of, a hold of the NVUA, you're going to have a public relations nightmare on your hands. The NVUA? National Vampires Union. Ah, ah, ah. All vampires should be respected and given blood. <laughs> well, go ahead and call the NVUA and tell Dracula I said hello. I will, because we're all just the same to you. Honestly, I expected more out of this university. Union of Vampires? <laughs> And the entire audience is completely drenched. Oh man, wow. Needless to say, that was the last time I ever went to SeaWorld. Well, I've got to tell you, Ben, everything's looking great. Solid SATs, GPA high above our school's average. And your essay, to be honest, was quite moving. Well, this is such a great university. I'd be honored to attend. Hey, we'd be lucky to have you. Are you applying to any other universities? Nope, just here. Okay, great. So... Uh, yes? I'm in then? Well, no. Not yet, I mean. It, it, I have to pass this along to my supervisors. It's a process, you know, I can't officially... Sit down. What? Sit down, won't you? Is there a problem? That depends on you. You see, for reasons I cannot entirely explain at this moment, it is vital that I attend this university. I've been meticulously planning for this day. Years of SAT prep, AP classes, all in the hopes of being accepted. I was intending to hear an answer today. I'm sorry, Ben. I just don't have the authority to just let you in right now. There are forces at play here, friend. Forces that you cannot possibly comprehend. But trust me, it is very vital. And not just for me, but for the entire student body and faculty that I am enrolled in the fall semester. Many lives hang in the balance. You wouldn't want to be held responsible for the loss of life, would you? Of course not. But how is me letting you in today going to be saving lives? But the world is a series of connections and plans. Every human being affects another. Every decision has its consequence. And this decision, this decision, is the most important one you'll ever make. Ben, you're being incredibly vague and Besides, it's not as simple as me just letting you in. An oral agreement in this state is legally binding, so in fact, it is that simple. Look, what I can tell you is it's practically a done deal. I'm going to give you a great recommendation, and with your staff... That's not what I'm asking for. Look, Ben, let's not ruin what was a great interview by arguing... I'm, I'm not leaving until I get my answer. Well, you're going to have to, because I have another perspective coming in at one. No, you don't. Your 4 o'clock canceled this morning. You don't have another appointment until Rebecca Smith at 4.45. How did you... Did you break into my email or something? Okay. I'm not sure what happened here, but I think I'm going to have to call security. Hello, I... Hello? Phone troubles? <laughs> <laughs> Door's locked, and we're ten stories up, so the windows wouldn't be a very safe option either. <laughs> All right, who are you? A name is but a label, and I have many labels, but that's not what's important right now. What's important is that you tell me right now exactly what I was hoping to hear. Ben, I would if I could. It's just... It's only an outage, friend. Circuits break. All the time. <laughs> Please, I have no real authority. Uh, an acceptance from me would be meaningless. Then there's no reason not to say it. Why are you doing this? I'm not doing this. You're doing this. And it can all go away with 
three little words. But it won't! No! Those aren't the right words. Say it! Just say it! Okay. Okay. You're accepted. You've been accepted. You'll be enrolled in the fall semester upon hearing of your acceptance. <laughs> That's great. I, I can't tell you how excited I am. I gotta call my mom. It was so nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> This is extremely bad. Not one? Not a single one. You must have been too critical. You must have seen at least one kid we could recommend. Do you want to go through my files? Here you go. But if you're going to look through mine, then I'm going to look through yours. What does practicing vampire mean? <laughs> what about Ben? His SAT scores. No! <laughs> what is SAT scores? No! Just <laughs> trust me. Sorry I'm late. My name's Emily Court. I have an appointment at five. Oh, oh my gosh, right. I I'm so sorry. I, I got a little sidetracked. It's no problem. Should I wait? Oh no, please. Come on in. <laughs> so, let's take a look here. Oh, nice record, Emily. Valedictorian of your class. They decided that already? Normally they wait till the end of the year to decide that but I guess my GPA was too high for anybody to catch up to me. I mean, there are a lot of really bright students in our school, so I was just as surprised to find out this early. Well, I am really impressed with all the after-school activities you've amassed. First chair cellist, uh, president of the student council, a uh, member of something called the Thespians, and treasurer of the Relief Club? Yes. That was a club formed by me and three friends as a public outreach. We do shelter meals, food drives, build houses. There wasn't really anything like that at our school. Well, Emily, I should tell you that out of every student I've seen today, you're the most promising. I'm so sorry. It's just, this is my mom. I told her not to call unless it was really, really urgent. Oh, no, it's, it's fine. Go ahead. OK, thank you. Hello? Yeah, no, everything's going fine. Any news? Oh my god. Oh my god! I got accepted? I'm officially an Ivy Leaguer? <laughs> and what about the scholarship? Are you... My mom... They don't let... They don't let anybody in free. I... I can't believe this is happening. I... I'm so sorry. I just... I just have... Thank you. <laughs> this guy does magic. This guy does wipe out. Did somebody say wipe out? <laughs> <laughs>